right title. Today's going to be talking about contaminants in fish, Lake Erie, Niagara River, Virginia Creek, Lake Ontario, New York, the Mercury Stable, Wild PCBs, Pesticides, and Oxins have declined. summary of results from the first set of, of our Great Lakes Restoration Issues funded uh, look at contaminants in the Great Lakes. Um, and I'd like to thank many DEC regional staff who collect the fish here. Uh, some of you guys are here, I guess. Um, we got collections by DEC seven, regional 7, 8, and 9 staff, as well as the uh, Lake Ontario and Lake Erie Fisheries Units. I'm really happy for that collaboration. Couldn't have happened without them. The work was funded, the analytical work was funded by the US EPA as part of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. So we, we collected fish from uh, uh, basically New York Great Lake waters, so Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Upper and Lower Niagara Rivers, which are separated by the falls. Fish don't move too much between them. Uh, also, Cayuga Creek, uh, which drains into the Niagara River just above the falls. And Cayuga Creek is receiving water for Love Canal and all the nasty stuff that came out of there. We also collected fish from the Salmon River. These are spawning salmonids in the fall. And so th th those are, again, Lake Ontario fish, but they're spawning. We um, collected a total of 664 fish, up to nine fish, up nine species per site. Our target was generally 10 to 15 fish per site of a species, uh, and particularly for the, for the salmonids, uh, we looked for more. And what what we got at any particular site really depended on what was available. I mean, we tried for some continuity um, of species between sites, but it's pretty tough. You get what's there. Uh, most of the fish were prepared as a DDC standard fillet, and I, I pulled this out um, just to point out this. This is um, the standard fillet was standardized in the 1970s. We have a great deal of continuity of data as we look at our historical data. The standard fillet is a left side, skin on, standardized cuts with the rib bones, uh, except for things like uh, bullheads and catfish, the skin's taken off. Uh, 41 of these fish were prepared instead of a standard fillet as whole fish with the head and viscera removed. That's because they were too small to provide enough analytical mass to, to be analyzed. And based on previous work, we know that those, those results are fairly similar to the standard fillet. All the fish were analyzed at um, our DEC's Hell Creek Laboratory in Gloversville. These fish were analyzed for mercury, percent lipid, PCBs as aerochlorous, and a set of 21 organochlorine pesticides, as well as octafluorostyrene, which is, it's, it bioaccumulates in its industrial byproduct, and again, this uh, was released in the Niagara River. There's a lot of in industry there. Uh, and it, it analyzes similarly to uh, the pesticides. We sent out 113 fish to be analyzed at the contract laboratory, Pace Analytical in Minneapolis. And typically three to six individuals of a species at a site. These were analyzed for polychlorinated dioxins and furans, which I'm going to refer to as dioxins from now on and polybrominated diphenyl ethers, which I'm going to refer to as PBDEs. Uh, the dioxins and furans are extremely toxic. Uh, th these, again, are a legacy uh, contaminant. They've been in the system for a long time. They are a cause of fish consumption advisories in the Lower Niagara River, Lake Ontario, Canada Creek. Love Canal is a major source for these guys, so th th they've gotten into the system a long time ago. PBDEs were used as flame retardants. A lot of the flame retardant fabric that you would have had in your house um, at one point would have had PBDEs in it, um, uh, children's pajamas, things like that. Uh, these have been phased out since the late 2000s, but they're very persistent, they're bioaccumulative, and they're toxic. 
and uh, PPDs are a class of 209 different chemicals. Uh, we analyzed 47 of these, which are referred to as congeners. So our, our goals for this were fourfold. To w first, to provide data to the New York State Department of Health so that they could reevaluate fish consumption advisories. In some cases, we the contaminant data we have were really quite old. We also wanted to be able to look at spatial patterns, compare sites, and also see what's happened over time. Uh, how, how have these contaminant levels changed? Third thing was to look at what are called contaminants of emerging concern. The PBDEs are one of this class. Th these are things that are coming into the environment more recently, and we don't know very much about them. We know they're in the environment. We don't know the extent to which uh, they accumulate in fish and wildlife, or the extent to which they can pose a risk to people who eat sport, sport caught fish. Our, our fourth goal was to evaluate progress towards cleaning up the Great Lakes areas of concern. There's a big push by the Environmental Protection Agency now to deal with the areas of concerns all around the Great Lakes, and one, one of the reasons for these areas of concerns is restrictions on fish and wildlife consumption because of the contaminants in the fish. So on to results, I'll start with mercury. Uh, and the mercury, so each, each um, box is a uh, species, and uh, there's different uh, colors for the different um, sites that the species were taken at. Length is on the x-axis, mercury concentration is on the y-axis. And these all have different scales, so we could use the full vertical extent of the graph. Uh, one of the things that's very common with mercury is that the mercury concentration goes up with the length of the fish. And in our case, 25 out of 38 possible relationships, a species out of sight had a significant relationship. Most of the exceptions were from carp, bullheads and catfish, and the introduced, there's four introduced salmonids. When, when this regression was significant, when we did statistical comparisons, we used the regression to adjust the mercury concentration to a standard length. And the other thing I want to point out here, whoops, I got the wrong button. Coho, uh, up here, you can see that there's two clusters. Uh, the, the upper right cluster are fish taken in the fall at the Salmon River, the spawning run. The lower left cluster are fish taken in the western part of the lake early in the year. Uh, this isn't a cohort. The, the fall fish were actually taken the year before the spring fish, but they're all two-year-old fish except for that one three-year-old fish that showed up. And, um, I'm sorry, that two-year-old fish. I'm sorry, that was a three-year-old fish from the Western Basin. Um, so mercury, it, it, it's, it's not a longitudinal uh, example, but it does seem to show that these the mercury rel levels really grow up, go up as these guys grow over the summer. So now, now to look at everything on a common scale, uh, the mercury concentration, the, the overall mean was 0.16 parts per million. The range was from 0 0.29 to 1.09. For uh, context, the health department tends to put in a specific advisory at one part per million. And we actually only had one fish over that, that 1.09 fish was the only fish over one part per million. Uh, the highest mean concentrations came from freshwater drum from the upper and lower, whoops, somebody else is doing this yesterday. Uh, uh, the, the upper and lower Niagara River, I should tell you um, the abbreviations um, going from left to right, top to bottom, UNR is upper Niagara River, then lower Niagara River, Cuyuga Creek, Salmon River, um, then on the bottom Lake Erie, le western Lake Ontario, eastern Lake Ontario. So the, the highest concentrations were for freshwater drones from the upper and lower Niagara rivers. These were, the means were 0.65 and 0.59 parts per million. And the next highest mean was 0.27 parts per million, less than half of that. So the, the, the news for mercury in terms of absolute concentration is pretty low. We don't really see much that would cause the health department angst in terms of putting on a specific environment advisory. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, I want to now move on to historical comparisons, and we have data going back to 1970. The department collected a lot of data in 1970, and then we broke our historical record up into 
four time periods because we don't have every species in every year. So th this is just showing the numbers of samples we have. Uh, we use four time periods, 1970, 1988 to 96, 1999 to 2008, and then our most recent collection of 2010 to 2012. We sort of broke these up by some breaks in the data. And what, what we found now looking historically, these are all on a common scale, and th these are length adjusted where, where appropriate so, so that you can uh, make valid comparisons. And what we saw is that the 1970 period was higher than any of the three subsequent periods in pairwise comparison. 1970 um, dropped from 1970 to the mid-80s to uh, early 90s. And then among the three later periods of 88 to 96, 1999 to 2008, and then 2010 to 2012, we saw very little change. And th this, this comes out with statistical comparison. I won't give the numbers, but basically we had a drop from 1970 and then the last 25, 30 years, very little change. So PCBs move on. Uh, all of our mean PCB concentrations were below the FDA tolerance level of two parts per million for commercial fish. Most of the means were below the one part per million level, which the health department tends to put on advisors. We only had one mean that was above that, which was uh, carp from Lake Erie, and it was just a little bit above. Uh, and only actually five species location means in our 2010-2012 data exceeded a half a part per million. Uh, on an individual basis, only about 1% were above two parts per million, and 80% were above or below a half part per million. So PCBs are looking better. These are uh, some selected data series. We can see a decline. Uh, the PCBs were banned in the late 70s, and they dropped precipitously after that. And then we're seeing kind of a, a slow continuing, more or less continuing decline. So yeah, that's actually pretty good news on the PCB front. Uh, again, at this point, with the exception of that one carp, uh, not really a specific advisory concern. We move on to pesticides. Uh, these are some selected data. Nearly all of the pesticides, those other pesticides, were below the detection limit or very close to the detection limit. These are the four uh, pesticides where we had any real numbers of de detections, DDT, chlorinate, Myrex, and uh, hexafluorocyclobenzene. And uh, so again, we have the columns going from left to right, Lake Erie, Upper Niagara River, Lower Niagara, Lower Niagara River, Cayuga Creek, Lake Ontario, and the Salmon River concentrations. And what I've given you in each set of uh, uh, columns here is the quartile values. So this is the 25th percent, 50th percent, and 70th percentile. So what this is showing is that for DDT at the Salmon River, uh, 78th, 5th percentile is about 0.15 parts per million. If there's no bar, it means that at that percentile, everything was non-detect. So not many detections. Where the detections were there, they're very low. The pesticide situation is actually looking quite good. And this is particularly important for Myrex because Myrex is the source of a lot of the consumption advisories for the Lower Niagara River and Lake Ontario. And uh, again, we can see a good decline over time. Uh, you know, uh, we really come to quite low level. And uh, these two here, right down on the baseline, are from Lake Erie and the Upper Niagara River. The Myrex came again from Love Canal mostly, so that, that it entered the system just above the fall, and some from the Oswego River. So, yeah, the Myrex situation is good. Um, dioxins, a uh, different kind of a graph. Dioxins, again, are a class of chemicals. Uh, they're, they're very toxic. The most toxic is this 2378 TCDD. And for the other dioxins, the toxicity is expressed relative to the 2378 TCDD. And what you do to get a total toxicity is you add up the concentration weighted by that relative toxicity, and you get what's called the toxic equivalent or TEQ, and what's graphed here is the median TEQ. The FDA gets bent out of shape. Their tolerance level is 50 parts per trillion. 
Our New York State Health Department is more concerned at about 10 parts per trillion. And what, what we can see is that with the exception of Cayuga Creek, everything is well below uh, that 10 part per trillion level. Cayuga Creek, uh, we've got some higher values. We can also see that uh, the green, most of the toxicity comes from the 2378 TCDD. And um, again, dioxin levels have declined. We don't have as much data. We have to send the dioxins out. The, sample, the analyses cost a lot more. But again, the levels are coming down, which is uh, very nice to see. Um, so I'll move on to our last class of contaminants, the PBDEs. And again, these are contaminant of emerging concern. This is the first big look at PBDEs in New York State fish. And uh, again, we're looking at um, uh, the contribution of some of the different congeners to the, the total PBD concentration. Uh, we found PBDEs in every single fish that we analyzed. The concentrations varied over about a two order magnitude range from 1.3 parts per billion to 122 parts per billion. The median was right in the middle of that, about 64 parts per billion. We detected about two thirds of the 47 congeners that we analyzed for. And mo most of the um, concentration came from a pretty small number of these congeners, particularly BDE 47, which is that green one that's accounting for most of it. Uh, the health department did a risk assessment based on, on these data, and their conclusion was that at their recommended maximum general advice of up to four meals a month, that PBDEs, and these fish at least, didn't really pose um, uh, an, an, a risk, uh, an additional risk to the fish consuming public. So that's good news. Uh, so overall, what, what, what does this mean? Overall, I find these results really encouraging. Mercury's been pretty stable for a long time, doesn't seem like it's going anywhere um, or has gone anywhere, and that's because mercury is really a global pollutant. Uh, the mercury is depositional, it comes from coal fired power plants upwind, and increasingly, because of the increasing uh, growing number of power plants across the world. There's worldwide emission and then um, transport and deposition of mercury. Uh, on the other hand, relative to other places in New York where mercury is a real health concern, it's, 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 well, it's fairly low here, so that's good, good news. The other legacy contaminants, uh, the PCBs, the uh, pesticides and dioxins, these are all lipophilic. They end up in the lipids of the fish, and these have really declined. It, it, it's, it's a good thing to see. Uh, banning these things, cleaning up hazardous waste site, and giving it some time, it, it does work. I think these things will work out of the system. I think we'll continue to see declines. Um, our first look at a contaminant of emerging concern, PBDEs, they're ubiquitous. Every fish, uh, they're in there, fortunately, and this part of the state doesn't seem to be a health risk. Uh, and I think we can expect to see these decline because they've been phased out. Of course, there's all kinds of other contaminants uh, that are coming into use that we don't know anything about. And finally, Cuga Creek still looks like a potential problem. Uh, it's just a problem child. And uh, so one of the most important outcomes here was that the health department reduced a lot of the advisories in Lake Ontario, Lower Niagara River. They've actually asked for another collection, which we started last year. I hope we'll finish this year. If they get another year of data that's similar, uh, they'll probably be able to reduce the advisor be even longer. And don't hold me to that, because I don't speak for them. Um, so anyway, that's, that's our news. Thank you. of each of these is expressed relative to the 2378 TCDD. And is that added as just a matter of convenience or is it based on real? I, I believe these things have been, I've been you know, worked out. I, I don't think, yeah, because I mean, there's similar modes of action, there's similar chemicals. All right, thank you. Okay.
we did King of the Creek. But oh, it's, it's a, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, that that was the highest ones. And um, there, one of the things, if you length adjust them, it's not so out of whack. They they, they happen to be pretty big fish. Um, but yeah, we're, we're not really sure why. The reason I ask, so if you have any idea, don't have any drum samples from Lake Ontario. Uh huh. I'm filming around Koi Bay the third week in September this year. Uh -huh. Bayman of Lake Ontario okay, yeah. near Rochester. Yep. Again, the question: How much time does drum spend in the bay uh -huh. versus the lake? Yeah, I, I don't. don't, I don't know. Yeah. But do you want to sample a drum? Can you get drum from there? Yeah. Oh, well, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the state record drum came from around Aquay Bay last year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, I think that'd be a good idea. We'll definitely have tons. I mean, of do people fish for those? Hmm? Do people fish for them? Oh yeah, they okay. fish for them. Yeah. Eat them. Yeah, we suspect we suspect more people eat drum than I think they. Do. Okay. I've caught lots of them. I've never eaten one. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. but I know people do. Okay. No, I think that'd be a good thing to do. Uh, uh, well, how many? Thirty? No, there, probably ten. Thirty uh, edible size or various size? Uh, I would definitely go with edible size. But what I'll do, I'll make a note of that, and when I talk to Webb, I'll uh, mention that. You know, okay. we talk. But yeah, we typically look for ten, ten at a site. Ten. I was really surprised you didn't have any drum from Lake Ontario. I, mean, I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think we targeted them. So, but yeah, and actually, I, I can't remember the reason we have 2010 to 12 instead of 2010 to 11. Is Mike Wolf, I can't remember if it was Upper or Lower Niagara River, but Mike Wolf couldn't get them, and he went out there the next year, 2012. And, oh, look, here's drum. Now I'll, I'll get these for Wayne. So, okay, let me talk to these folks. Okay, okay good, thank you. I was wondering. Uh -huh. And I've got, I think, much higher mercury levels than uh -huh. you do. Yeah, you probably do. But I'm going back to survey, uh, again, because I have weird metals. Uh -huh. some heavy metals. Uh -huh. Some lakes around the border. So it's before the water enters. Uh -huh. For the most part. But I was wondering, do you have a card or contact information? I can give you a card. They don't um, give us. Yeah. I don't have too many contacts in this arena. Okay. So, so do you work at Fort Trump? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, do, you, do you want me to? You probably want to write this because my handwriting stinks. Okay. It's uh, Wayne. Uh, Rick Dirt. The phone is 518-402-8974. And email is wayne.rickdirt. Oh, 